Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today we're going to be talking about cravings. I'm Lisa Bubari, your host, and uh, today uh, it is a talk about cravings and what we crave how we crave and why we crave and you know we started doing this uh, because of i've been getting so many emails uh so many of my clients that have been coming in for hypnosis and hypnotherapy it's like the beginning of the year they want to become healthier they want to get in shape but there's this internal desire and the craving that they have and they can't get over it so today i thought why not talk about craving and what is craving what is uh what triggers cravings and um uh, let's do this so we start i bet you anything you have had cravings you know we get cravings pregnant ladies get cravings we get cravings for certain things like chocolates maybe for uh salt there is this desire and need for it you know there was a time that i have no idea why but years and years ago for a period of few weeks and it only lasted a few weeks i had a craving for ice ice so i would go to 711 and get a big gulp of nothing but those round ices and they, i would just go to the machine get a like uh, a big gulp fill it up with ice and just chew on ice so years later i found out that it was probably a deficiency so is craving because of lack of something We'll discuss this a little bit more hello hi kareen how are you so cravings can be triggered by a lot of things yes believe it or not it can be triggered by people things a feeling uh, a situation or anything else that has been associated with using it in the past so that's what craving is craving is lack thereof or a withdrawal of something actually it is pretty simple to explain i've been writing all this every time you reach out for your favorite comfort food or your comfort something that gives you a sense of satisfaction it satisfies a need or a craving right so your body starts relying on more of this people who are smokers know this very well that when they are not smoking suddenly they get this urge or a craving to have a cigarette or it can be for anything else it's mostly a craving for satisfying a uh, food uh and or an, an intake so there's a lot of people that also do binge eating and it becomes a habit instead of remaining only a way to find this comfort place so research has shown one of the biggest things that we crave in life is food and food addiction is connected to a dopamine receptor which is right in here and it's a craving but the good news is that we can hack our brain uh, in order for the craving to disappear or just eliminate and how we do it is by in a simple way of putting it is the emotional incident that affected the endorphins or which was the neural transmitters in our subconscious mind it helps us deal with the emotionals so 
going from a combative relationship of I want it but I can't have it I want it I'm craving it but I'm not allowed to have it it can be sweets it can be chocolate did you know that some people have cravings to potato chips because of the salt or we have cravings to cheese and cheese has this component in itself that also has this craving mode also some people are literally uh, they're addicted yes addicted or crave junk food which is like they want the hamburger the bun and everything so before the salivation starts it everything in craving starts in our mind our imagination we visualize it and then the salivation starts and then the body reacts to it and says yes I want more of that so it can be a food factor or it can be an emotional so again as I've explained many many times no matter what our habits and behaviors and everything it is it's all in our mind's eye so I just swallowed my saliva so when we visualize something that then we turn around and say but I'm craving it thinking that the body is going through that withdrawal but it is our eye and what's in our mind's eye the emotional connection to it that gives us a sense of satisfaction right a sense of satisfaction or comfort or feeds the need I'm saying this again feeds the need of whatever it is that there was that emotional connection and you go oh that's what I want so some foods are exactly that food cravings that it's like an opiate it's like an opioid that um, helps the appetite and the food intake in general is all interrelated so that's what happens people with low blood sugar also go through this craving they crave the sweet which is literally like an endorphin it adds it it's like an opioid uh, and it just satisfies it and yet it satisfies it only temporarily just like when you do drugs when you do anything that gives you a sense of satisfaction that you must have it at that very moment and it gives you a sense of satisfaction until the next one so drugs and all all, all kinds of so maintaining a food diary here's the things that you can do first you can keep a diary of when your cravings happen right so to understand when you're going through this withdrawal it can be drugs it can be smoking it can be gambling it can be even craving of intimacy it can be a craving of the chocolate it can be craving of a lot of the things that it's oral now you can write about it keep track of when those cravings happen and get to see the emotional connection of what you feel and when the craving comes so tobacco is another thing that most people say but I crave cigarettes I go through a withdrawal is it the body that is going through this withdrawal or is it the mind you know a lot of people think that addicts don't have much of a uh, strong will because if they had a strong will they could stop this addiction but do you know that addicts especially people who are smokers or chain smokers they have strong will first and foremost you can't tell them to stop until they are ready secondly if if and when they want that cigarette they will go through the 
end of the world to all kinds of means to find a way to buy a, a pack of cigarettes to unwrap it at that very moment and have that cigarette. So it takes a lot of will. And um, so this feeling of deprive uh, when we think someone is telling us you can't have it, it's as if telling us I am denying you the right to have it. And that creates more of I want it. I want it in my mind. I want it physically, emotionally, and mentally. I cannot do without it. So, what we are doing is, first and foremost, with all my clients who come in here either for smoking, wanting to stop smoking, wanting to stop overeating, stop overdoing any of the things, is do you have a pattern? Let us discover the pattern. Write the patterns, when it happens, how it happens, and what you feel if you're not receiving it. I hope this makes sense. So the the next one is the emotional connection to whatever it is that you want. An emotional craving generally makes you want, want it more. And this urge, the compulsion of satisfying it becomes more important, more um, I need to have it right now. So the next time you're feeling usually more emotional, make a conscious, make a conscious effort not to reach out for the food and just hold yourself or pause for three minutes. Most cravings disappear. Most cravings disappear if you give three minutes of three minutes of like pause. And if you can wait three minutes and just pause and instead of reaching for that food or reaching for that chocolate, reaching for that salt, unless there is a medical di uh, medical need or if you are diabetic, you must have your insulin shot or your sugar intake right away. That's not what we are talking about. So another thing is people who go through this binge eatings and everything, I tell them, make sure that you do have something small for breakfast time to satisfy an urge. Have a small little snack, small little snack about 10 o'clock and then your lunchtime uh, proportionize it. And then at three o'clock, have a small little healthy snack. And then by 6.30 or something, you're having your dinner. And then do your fasting, if need be, for the duration of like giving yourself three hours to five hours of not eating anything before sleep time. And so that also helps. It's putting yourself on a balance. So the thing is a lot of people crave the sugar and sugar, we all know that sugar is bad for you, but according to a lot of studies, it's sugar intake is addictive. Um, I've talked about this for people who wanted to stop smoking, that inside the filter, inside the, uh, not only the nicotine, but the filter part, there is this, it's like a sugar, uh, it's like a sugary, that sweetener, that when people smoke in that filter, they get this sense of they are breathing in and taking in a sense of not only the tobacco intake, but a sweetener. And if you know, uh, if you know of any cigarette uh, smokers, if you look at the filter part of it, the saliva touching that filter and everything creates this, um, it, it's like a burning, right? But it's that yellowish part that is darker and that's because the sweetener and the saliva get uh, with the moisture from the mouth and the saliva creates this uh, deep yellow circle and that's 
the intake of the sweetener with saliva and juice and tobacco everything so the it satisfies the craving of not only the tobacco but also the sweetener i don't think there is much in our world that we can have an intake that does not have sweetener in it so what i help my clients is reclaim who they are and what they want to do is being free of being shackled to cravings and it is possible so another thing is a lot of people have this craving of coffee that without their coffee they cannot function and there's people who drink minimum of two cups to five or six cups a day and that in itself is again nicotine so nicotine sugar is one nicotine is the other so those are the withdrawals that we talk about you know it's like that white stuff right so because sugar it's addictive there is a saying that we have there is a physical draw the sugar creates this imbalance in our body that demands more of of that sugar in order for it to normalize so that's the physical part of it the mental part of it is that our mind becomes to expect sugar to expect the sweetener within cert certain triggers or when we get agitated we go and eat something for that comfort food and we usually reach for something uh, that is sweetener that gives us that immediate satisfaction like tobacco does like uh, drug does like alcohol does it gives you that instant gratification and there is nothing that goes in your body faster than oral gratification and we're not talking about what gets inserted so their emotional connection to that is you become hardwired to associate that sugar intake with a comfort and love love and you reach for this substitute false gratification that feels real and yet it is not so what we do in hypnosis in hypnotherapy when I work with my clients in order to reduce the craving is to take back their own freedom because taking back your own power from sugar from uh, opiates from nicotine from alcohol from caffeine is to get on this refinement of knowing that you are more in control than the substance is controlling you again in your own mind's eye realizing that we are all in a transition and when you come to uh, a session with me is going from where you are to transmit something to overcome something to go over this hump or a bridge in order to find relief from that addictive uh, behavior we're not talking about personality it is a behavior it is a habit so a lot of people say smoking is a habit yes it is a habit that after a while if you're smoking over a pack a day it is no longer a habit but it is now a part of addiction if it is not only one glass a week or social drinking with your friends and if it is a daily thing now it is into the addictive part same as sugar overeating over drinking over smoking anything you do overly then it maybe the norm but what is the norm for some people is different than others when it comes to affect you in a negative way then it is 
past the norm, if this makes sense. So, what I do is I teach you to find the tools and the techniques that I teach is find a sense of pause, teach you how to do breath work, because as you inhale oxygen and vitality and realizing that when you do deep breathing and exhale, you release and let go of that moment of the need versus want. And also when you exhale properly, you can release the stressor, the craving and that urge at that very moment and become more conscious of your own breath and breathing. Breathing in oxygen, vitality, goodness, nurturing versus the urge and the desire. So hypnosis is delving deep within your subconscious mind where the emotional, mental and physical uh, connection, the feeling was to the cravings and we reverse very gently so the cravings begin to disappear yes that's exactly what we do because addiction is a feeling of withdrawal it's saying that you can't and by golly when someone tells you you can't just like a tantrum child what do you do <gasps> i must who says i can't watch me i can so what if we reverse that and you yourself tell yourself there is no way I can do this but instead you turn around and say well I can't quit I can't let that go by golly why not then the subconscious mind turns around and says what if I can watch me so Simply put, that addictive part of you is like the bully. It is. It bullies you that there is no way you can let me go. There is no way you can do without me. There is no way you can let me go because you need me. Even though we know we don't need the bully, right? And yet, the victim is constantly drawn to that bullying personality. So, yes, a lot of people say, am I addicted to this kind of a personality or is this the kind of a relationship I don't want it, but I get into that cycle, like being in a hamster's wheel? So, again, you understand. So, however you may be experiencing this physical, mental, and emotional withdrawal, it's coming off of that need so it can be need for all kinds of things what if you were to rename this and turn it and say it's a withdrawal and then when we're coming off a of sugar or any kind of a craving we turn around and say it is a transition I'm coming off a trans or I am transi transitioning from where I am to what it is that I want and become clear to what it is that you want because remember sugar those sweeteners and anything that you crave or you think you are addicted to it is satisfying an emotional a mental and a physical need it is the need that we must be clear why the need why being off of this I mean if you can just imagine your life and if you were to be free of this addictive behavior the habit the craving how would your life be how would it look like? How would you feel without it or less? 
<coughs> with less of it, right? So the hack is, instead of being a, a victim that you're withdrawing from this sugar, withdrawing from this addictive habit, is envisioning yourself, envisioning yourself being the master of your own choices and healing within, healing your body, healing and being free so that you can breathe easily and that you can go and have all kinds of food and realize that I can have that and not have this. I can, you know, this reminds me of a client that used to have this addiction and every time she didn't have it, there would be this pain in her body. So she went to a kinesiologist and after they did a muscle testing, they said, actually, you know what? You're allergic to gluten. And it's like, really? Yeah. If you start eating gluten-free, then all this pain, all this reaction will disappear. Okay. So she started eliminating gluten from her food intake. And her body started adjusting. And she started feeling so much better, digesting food so much better. And then she started going out with all her friends and everything. And she was like, I'm gluten free. I can't have this. I can't have that. I can't have this. And then realized, you know what? It's like, it's, it, it's so hard to be gluten free because not everywhere has it. And it was cornering her to all the things that she can have and it became like so inconvenient so she started you know what forget about it i'm gonna start eating this and i'll have a little bit of that a little bit of this and then add it not caring if it is gluten or not next thing you know within a few weeks the pain started coming her digestive tract started responding and she says huh so realizing it's not the free will it's understanding that when i put this in my body my body has an extreme reaction so i can either be in a discomfort and have all these digestive reactions and take pills uh, for having a better digestion all the time and deal with the pain or I can reclaim and rewire myself consciously and subconsciously that in order for me to be healthier to be happier is I'm going to eliminate gluten from my food intake and live my life this way and that becomes my new way of living not to have gluten in my body believe it or not after utilizing that consciously and subconsciously just like rewiring rewiring it and knowing that once your subconscious mind takes it then the physical mental and emotional aspect of everything you do becomes this new way of living this new way of being guess what she was happier she dropped the weight uh, her body did not have reflux and everything seemed to work smoother so that emotional connection to I can't became ah, now I can I am free of the pain and this is the way I want to live. So the person who comes and says, I can't quit. And I can't because I'm going through this withdrawal. The subconscious mind comes to adjust to the withdrawal. Releases the connection to the emotional craving. And the craving subsides for the food, for the sugar, for the chocolate, for the cheese 
for the salt, for the tobacco, for whatever it is, then the body feels satisfied. When the body feels satisfied and the mind is not craving it, again, in your own mind's eye, visualize it, and then you step into it. And there is no more agitation. So it's called reheal the emotional root cause. And that is what I help you with. Emotional root cause of it shifts from a need to free. So we stop all that and we look for the root of the emotion that used to mindlessly and subconsciously crave, create this craving for you. And by doing this, you solve that deeper need and then the vicious cycle ends. So that's exactly what we do. As a matter of fact, you can even sit and give yourself permission to close your eyes for five minutes. to a place where you feel comfortable, you are safe. And as you listen to even one of my audio recordings, which is the Relax and Unwind, and as you listen to that, you realize that as you allow yourself and give yourself permission to relax and unwind, that you can easily breathe better that you feel more aligned, that afterwards you can just take a walk and feel so much more relaxed, that you can even, another thing you can do when you feel a craving, not only you write it and you write why you need it, keep a journal, do this meditation with my Relax and Unwind, you can click below and get the download and or you can just pick up a phone call a friend and realize that there are so many techniques to become aware of why you need what you need and that you no longer need and things can become a want but why would you want something that it's no longer good for you so Hypnosis is easy and it's a relaxed mind state that gives you a way, it gives you a portal for you to communicate more directly with your subconscious mind that helps you go deeper into that level that as you go through this transition and shift of habit, it makes a lasting impression and the change begins and if you've never tried hypnosis by all means I have this um, 10 minute uh, audio recording you can just go to my website which is healwithin.com uh, and right there just put your email click and you will receive a audio recording free of charge for you to sit back, listen to that, attract more love into your life. Again, it's targeting that strong pull and knowing urges, take three minutes, be more mindful, and specifically in just a few short sessions, even with me in person or via Zoom, you can break the unconscious spell of cravings, sugars, tobacco, sweeteners, and create a mental barrier between you and your cravings. And then shift your relationships to all those cravings and negative habits that you are no longer slave to that bully. Hmm? So together, we can. And that's exactly what I do. I help you 
heal within. So today's message is be the master and stop giving in to the bully, which is the cravings of whatever it is that draws you in. My name is Lisa. I'm your host every week to your Heal Talk Tuesdays. And until next week, I bid you goodbye and God bless you. May the universal light surround you. See you next week. Thank you for being here. If you want to check out some of the testimonials that I've got, click right here. But if you want to go back and watch other videos from a week ago, two weeks ago, even a year ago, click right here. See you next time.